Good morning, children. It's lovely to see you. Um, I thought I would do a new assembly now that uh, we're beginning to come back to school. So what I want to talk about today is the importance of following instructions. And I'm going to show you something I've made and I want you then to have a go at making it at home or in school. So this is an auto gyro. And the great thing about the auto gyro is this. Okay, so now I want to show you how to make an auto gyro that spins around. So we're focusing on following instructions and I want to show you how to make an auto gyro. All I need, or all you need, is a ruler, a pencil or a pen, a pair of scissors and a paper clip. So the first thing to do is to draw a square and you can decide what dimensions your square will be, but I'm going to do one where it's 12 centimetres by 12 centimetres. So I'm just going to mark out 12 centimetres from there, 12 centimetres there, and then from the top, that's from the side, and from the top, another 12 centimetres there, so that goes up there, and along there. And once I've marked my square out, then I'm going to mark where I'm going to put some slits for the wings. And I'm going to mark in four centimetres from one side and from the other side four centimetres, like so. And all I need to do then is, once I've marked where my four centimetres are, I just need to draw up four, uh, eight centimetres. Okay, so from there to there, to the top there. Not going all the way, just eight centimetres from the baseline, from the bottom line and further eight centimeters there. Okay, so I then need to cut this out. So I'm cutting my square out along the line, like so. And once I've done that, I just need to follow up those lines, not cutting all the way, just to the top, eight centimeters, all the way up, like so. Then I fold one wing in that direction forward and the other one behind it like that. So I've got that effect. And the final thing I need to do is put the weight on my auto gyro and I'm just going to put that on the central strut at the bottom like so. So I've now made my auto gyro. So I want to tell you a story about following instructions. Now just over 50 years ago, there was a very famous mission to the moon. And that was led by a captain, an astronaut by the name of Jim Lovell. And he had two other astronauts with him, Jack Swaggart and Fred Hayes. And they took off in Apollo 13. And all was going well. The, the rocket took off as normal. But as they were traveling in space towards the moon, they had to mix the oxygen in one of their tanks on, in the rocket. And just after they mixed it, there was an explosion on the rocket. They didn't know what had happened at first, but they knew something was wrong. They'd heard the explosion and they could see gas escaping from the rocket. And the people on the earth and ground control who were helping them, who were supporting them on the way, were trying to work out what was going on. They realised eventually that they were not going to get to the moon. And in fact, it was going to be touch and go, life, life and death, where they were going to actually get back. And on the way, the, uh, the astronauts had to listen very carefully to lots of instructions on how to redirect the rocket so it got back safely to Earth. At one point, they were running out of oxygen and there was too much of a gas called carbon dioxide. And they had to listen to instructions, uh, the astronauts, from ground control as to how to get rid of all this uh, carbon dioxide. Now, I showed you the auto gyro earlier and you could see what I was doing as well as me telling you what uh, to do. 
Well, 50 years ago, they didn't have that. They could only listen to instructions and not see at the same time. So you can see how tricky it was. But by following the instructions, they managed to get back safely in what was a very famous mission that didn't succeed, but got back safely. So Jim Lovell and his team uh, arrive safely back on Earth. So the reason we're talking about following instructions is that we are moving into a very unusual time. Some of our children at Aylwood are still working from home and some children are now starting to come back. And it's going to feel a little bit different if you're coming back because you might not necessarily be in the same classroom. You might not be with the same teacher. And it's all about keeping safe, keeping yourself safe and others safe. And even if you're not in school, it's again keeping yourself safe. And there's going to be some important instructions that we need to follow in order to be able to do that. So it's so important that when we come into school in the mornings, the first thing we do is wash our hands before we go out to play. And after we come, out to, uh, come back from play, we wash our hands. After using the toilet, we wash our hands. It's about being hygienic. And we all need to stay in our own little home groups. That's the, the group that you're in within your classroom. Unfortunately, you won't be able to go to other home groups because we don't want to, we want to keep each other safe and sound. And when we walk around the school, we keep our hands to ourselves and behind our backs and we walk to the right hand side. Another set of instructions that's important to follow to keep you safe and other people safe. And knowing where you can go in school. Because what we've done, for example, at playtime is that we set out different areas for different groups to use and only for your group to use that particular area. So please listen to your teachers when you come back to know what to do so that you are safe and you keep others safe. And of course, if you're not returning to school at just this moment in time, that's fine. But there's so important, it's so important that you follow instructions that will keep you safe and well. Thank you.